Bridge climb. <laughs> hey friends. So it's the end of June. It's been a really big month. And I thought I would take you all on a little journey of what I've been doing for the past month and the projects that have been consuming my life <laughs> in a good way. There's been a mural that I've been working towards for quite a long time. There's been a lot of like build up. I'm just getting to the point of actually painting the mural. There's also a, an illustration that I've had to do for a client for a project around um, Pride Month or Fall Pride Month, I should say. And it was for a car wrap. So essentially my work was gonna be like wrapped around a, a car, which is pretty cool and put on display for an event. Those two things have pretty much taken up all my time, which is great because I definitely needed to like chill out after World Pride and take some time off to become human again and get re-energized. And it's been like a nice re-entry point back into working again. Um, not too much overloaded, still working on some personal project stuff and some like behind the scenes things. But um, yeah, these two projects have really made it a great re-entry back into work. But before I get into those projects, hi, I'm Jeff. I'm Jeff McCann. I am an artist, illustrator, maker. I've been a full-time creative for the past eight years, working for myself on a whole bunch of different projects. I do lots of things from public art to murals, workshops, collaborations, artwork licensing, and my clients range all over from councils to schools to agencies, um, brands, all that kind of stuff. So the work that I do is always really varied. And this channel is all about me sharing my journey along the way, the tips and the tricks that I learn, and also just like a bit of like behind the scenes, like a behind the curtain of what it's like to do the work that I do, uh, the process, and a lot of sort of like the idea generation. I put the time codes for everything down below. So if you want to jump through to the different projects or different sections, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, let's get back to it. All right, so this first project that I'm doing this month is a mural, like I said, and the brief was pretty great for this one. So it's a building that I'm painting um, not too far away from my house, which is great for travel. It's the exterior of the building, so the paint has to be weather and like sun um, protected um, and like UV and all that fun stuff to make it last a long time. It's an industrial area, so the design has to really pop and stand out. As cars are driving by, um, something that we spoke about is we want it to be a like a real landmark building for the suburb and have people really notice it and remember it as like that amazingly painted bright building. The design itself we want to showcase things that are sold within the shop because it's a retail space um, on the wall so when people drive past they can see and get an idea of like what this what the shop sells. Time-wise we kind of have until like the end of financial year, which is great. There's a bit of leeway there, but yeah, it's not too bad. So I'm giving myself about two weeks to actually get the paint job done once we get everything locked in. One of the biggest and most exciting things is that because it's like a two-story building, I have to get a yellow card. I need to use a boom lift or like a scissor lift or some kind of thing like that. And I don't have a license for that. So that's great that I'm getting it done for this project, so that'll be a little bit scary, but a little bit fun. But yeah, so that's that's it. And I guess now what I'm gonna do is show you um, how I've come up with concepts um, and all the sort of like things that I've sort of referenced in the design as well. All right, bye. Okay, so this is the wall that I'll be painting, or I guess it's like building, not so much wall. It's a place called Reverse Garbage, which is one of the biggest, the best places in all of Sydney. It's like a treasure trove of all recycled materials. I go there all the time and I just love it. So it's really nice I'm able to paint the front of their building because it's like a really nice partnership. But as you can see, there's like lots, that's, yeah, that's better. Um, you can see there's lots of different angles and things I've got to work with. I've got to work out 
the footpath and sort of what what is manageable in terms of safety. If I have a boom lift and people walking by, they can't necessarily go under it, or can they? Um, is it going to be stable enough? I can't move this big bug sculpture. Uh, it's locked in and I can't go in the garden bed, but that's okay. We can work around that with the boom lift. I just thought I'd show you that now. All right, bye. Hello, welcome back. So I thought what I might do is take you over a really shorthand journey from when I got my initial concept for the mural through to what I ended up pitching to the client and so the stages I went through along the way. Um, so what, I, what you can see now is I'm in Illustrator and my first step was I went through and took photos of everything that I thought could be interesting to draw that was in the shop. So like back to the brief, they wanted me to put objects that they sell in the shop in the mural design. So I went around, took some photos of things, found some reference images, and then I went and drew something like this, or I drew this, which is a really simple outline of objects. By doing something like this, I was able to transfer all the different reference images into one visual language by just doing a simple outline and allowed to bring it into sort of like a, a Jeff's world, for instance. Uh, once I had done this, I then started to group everything into sort of similar shape um, groupings essentially. So you know, tall and thin things together, more smaller buttons all together, long and narrow sort of objects to the left here the thimble and the record and things that are more like square, I put them together. That just helped me to categorize and make sure I had a good variation in sizes because that will obviously make it be make it easier for me to do the final concept design. The next thing I did was to then I drew up a template. So this is a template of the building. We've got the front here where these are the windows in the middle. I've got the columns, the three sides of it. This is the, 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 the entry point that's like the faux entry point. And then that's the side of that as well. So I've laid it all out with all the windows and doors and sort of guides that I need to be there. I then put on where they have signage at the moment. That's what these three colored um, rectangles are. They wanted to be able to keep that signage there for once it's all done. So I wanted to put those in. And then essentially what I did was to drag and drop all those different outlines into those sh into these shapes and play a bit of like Tetris essentially. This way I could really map out where things could sit. And for instance, like I said before, with all the tall, long, narrow objects, I knew that th I was gonna need things like that for the column. So I generally, generally started with the bigger shapes and made sure I had everything kind of spread out across the whole design. And then I went back in and filled the gaps with the smaller elements and went from there. Uh, once I was really happy with this, I was then able to go in and this was adding the color. So this is the color palette that we agreed upon to start with for the client. Uh, I then wanted to go around and place all the color in different spots and I wanted to see, start to get an idea that this is where I could head. Uh, generally, I like to have a lot of color in what I do, the more the better, but I also have been trying to play around with restricting my color palette and playing more with tonal variation because I think it's really important that with every new project I do, I show a little bit of growth or variety because then that could pull in more future clients. So for this one, five to six colors is still quite a lot, especially the variation, but I wanted to try and keep it restrained to some degree for me, I guess. So once I'd done this, I was quite happy with where it would all um, be sitting. I then went back into my the initial first stage and I started to create more clear renderings of each object 
So really what I wanted to do was, for instance, with the these pliers, I created a green version of them to create the tonal variation. And then once I made that, then I went and created the orange version of it, the yellow version of it, the pink version of it, etc. And I did that with every single item. That way I had this like big catalog of everything that was possible that I could use in creating the final design. And it just meant that I had, I had options, which sometimes is like really important because if you don't go, if you don't do everything, like if you don't give yourself all the options, you could be limiting yourself to something that isn't the best. And for me as well, I wanted to play around with, for instance, up the top here with these like needle and threads, work out color combos that could work. And then from there it would, um, I would pick sort of like my top, my favorite one or two out of the six variations. And that would be what I'd compile in this final document. So once I created these elements, this is when I did go back to the client and sort of show them this is where the design is at. I showed them some renderings of this and then I also showed them like simple sort of mock-up like this to say, hey, what are your thoughts? Have you got concerns? Do you like where it's going? That way, if something wasn't what they wanted, then we could change it and I didn't spend too much time on it. But it also showed them I think the best thing about having these two documents is one, this shows detail and finesse and you know, these are really well rendered illustrations to show what's, what the end result could look like. But then this document shows a broader scope. So you want to show them a bit of both so they can really understand what the, the project could look like in the end. After this, one, the next thing I did was go back into that template and start to drop things in and replace the older mockups with the new renderings of it all. So for this part, as you can see, I really was playing with scale a lot. Um, from the initial concept, the design really evolved and the objects just became a lot bigger. It meant that, and a lot of the smaller little elements, secondary elements and fillers things were removed. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I think it's going to have like maximum impact and also the dark navy purple kind of like background allows the objects to pop as well. I then went along and you can see here where I've doubled up where the paint um, tube is and that just shows where uh, the design will go around the edge or around a curve or a corner. So it allowed me to see how much I needed to fill with the zipper and where the negative space was. So that's why there's all these sort of like this button here, it looks like it's being stretched because that's where it wraps around the building. From here, what I was able to do is then create little JPEG or PNGs of each of the sides and then turn it into a rendering. And this is obviously super helpful when showing the client it allows them to see what it is very likely to look like. <laughs> Sometimes people can't visualize it and this is totally gonna help them to raise any questions or concerns or yeah, this is the kind of thing that I would put in my pitch decks. I also, what I do when I do these sorts of images is that I will make sure the coloring is as close to realistic as I can get. Obviously this is a 2G, 2D digital image you're looking at on a screen and the finished mural isn't going to exactly look like this because it's painted by hand in natural light, it's a different medium. So I think, I think something that's really important for you to have a conversation about with your, with your client and this is something that I've learned from not doing it and then now it's a big part of it is making sure they understand that these mock-ups and these renderings are obviously not going to be an exact replica of what's going to be in real life. Things are going to look slightly different, but this is very true to it. it sometimes people just don't understand that you can't reproduce an image the way you've drawn it on the computer, <laughs> which is really bizarre, but it is what it is. Um, so I will usually make sure I'm, you know, whether it's the RGB CMYK, 
um, color mode for the file and then also the saturation I will tend to like drop it down a little bit so it's not as intense um, and then this is the final image as well that I put here obviously I left those signs in because they want to put them back up like I mentioned and yeah so I would submit these three images with the final pitch deck with the color combo and that kind of stuff and yeah this is the process I went through I'm super happy with where it ended up um, I think it's going to look great once it's painted on the wall and yeah. All right. See you later. Bye. Morning. So I just got back from the gym. Uh, I have my shopping with. I have my shopping list done for Bunnings, and so that's what I've got to do today: is go off and do a Bunnings trip, get all the paint. There's a few paint brushes I have to get as well, um, and little like containers and things like that. Majority of the biggest stuff I have, like drop sheets and uh, ladder and all those sorts of things, that's fine. So it's mainly just those few extra site specific things that I need for this particular mural. And then I'm gonna go to site and do a risk assessment and just like talk to the owners about where I can, you know, park the boom lift when it's when I am using it and then also at night time and just make sure there's nothing that I need to flag with the client. Uh, around the boom lift and like safety stuff. I know there's like some power lines and footpaths and things like that. So I have to go do that. And then I think I'll come home and do some drawing, which is great. Uh, yeah. All right, so come with me and um, see how it goes.
morning. All right, so it's day two. It's freezing. It's like 8 a.m. and I think it's like six degrees. And I've realized I need my fingerless gloves tomorrow and my beanie. Yeah, so yesterday was really good. I got started. I got the boom lift delivered with a little delay with no harness, but they eventually brought that to me, so that was great. Um, it was really, it was great to get so much done in one day. I got like quite a large section. What I've done is I've decided my process is going to be, I've got four days with the boom lift, so I have so I have divided the wall up into, you know, four days, hoping that that's enough time. I also have to work out logistically with the footpath that my plan will actually work on where I can place it safely like the base and then swing it across I think it will work well I've got some assistance coming in tomorrow to help me relocate it to a new space to make sure we're not hitting trees or power lines and I can still get to the wall so today I'm focusing on the column just there it's surprising how I felt quite safe having a wall, like being in the nook corner where I've got two walls around me. But yesterday when I was tracing up that and I was more exposed, it was interesting how much more I realized how high I was <laughs> and I was like holding onto the rails a bit more. Um, some things that I've really had to try and focus on when I started to paint was to really start to work out with the texture of the wall how refined I had to make the line work because obviously it's going to be seen from a height so you want to have it slick and polished but how much neatness do you need in it so that took me a little bit to do yesterday also working out the process of how I want to paint so it turned out that I really wanted to um, paint with a brush but it's just not not necessary and luckily I packed some rollers as well so my process has really begun to be cut out the edges or cut in the edges I should say so I've got the outline really nice and neat and then I just fill it in with a larger brush or a roller it works really well I mean I do that majority of my projects but um, I thought it was worth I just like to give it a crack with a paintbrush first just because I like to paint with a paintbrush um, so that works really well and yeah so I'm gonna get started it's day two I'm here all day hopefully next time I talk to you this this pillar will all be done and um, and then we'll be ready for day three all right bye I forgot I thought I might explain what the lettering and all that sort of stuff is so um, this is something I learned on YouTube thank God for YouTube um, so I think it's called like the lazy man method so basically what you do in order to create like a grid to draw your work onto what you do is so I got like gray paint and I just like wrote letters and numbers and like squiggle markings all over the space where I'd be drawing then what I do is I take a photo of the wall with that on it I then put it into Photoshop and then I will put the image of my artwork over the top as a transparent layer and I'll probably put up some references here so you can see and that way I can see on the wall where I need to draw for instance with this zipper knowing where the heart is it's near like this C shape and where it like interacts with that little L bit there so when I go up onto the wall to spray paint the blue outline of the whole design I use those squiggles and markings as my reference so you don't have to line up anything like a grid or anything like that so that's how it's done and yeah friends so it's day four of mural painting I'm on track which is great um, if anything maybe a little ahead of schedule which is um, an amazing feeling to have so what I've done so far is um, I mean what I've got left to do I should say is this little section up here with the pencil and a little cog with my eye in it um, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm totally cool, thank you. That's a lovely lady who works a reverse garbage. 
Yeah, so you're gonna paint this. Uh, it's meant to rain this afternoon. So I'm gonna try and get a bit done this morning. Try and let it dry because it's quite it's quite cloudy. It's kind of hard to see. So drying time's gonna take a little bit longer than normal. Um, so I'm trying, gonna try and get at least first coat done on this part and then I'm going to hold off and then maybe work under an awning on ground level for the rest of the afternoon. And then I'll come back on the weekend and do the final coat on that up there. I've also got one of my amazing friends, Sophie, coming to do some photos today, which would be great because obviously you need documentation of this kind of stuff. And it's amazing to be able to call on someone who's a friend, who's also an amazing photographer, who can come and document it for me and know that I'm gonna get some really great shots um, and capture sort of like the process as well. So that's my day, hopefully it all goes well, fingers crossed, and I'll talk to you all on the other side. Bye. Mwah. some real ABC shit, right. <laughs> you know? Right. It's day five of painting, the final day of painting on the boom. And it was meant to be, it was meant to be raining. I was gonna have to paint over the whole weekend, but look, I have got, blue skies which means I had to change my plans and drop everything and come on in today because I wanted to get the final few hours of painting done so I can actually have a weekend and chill and recharge before next week which is when I'll be painting everything that's ground level so the only thing I've really got to do is uh, yesterday when I painted I was painting right up until when the when the rain was going to hit so I was trying to manage dry time so things didn't run down the wall if they weren't dry in time so there's only there's only two sections that I need to touch up which is fine I kind of expected those two sections to potentially run but that's that's okay just have to fix those up today paint a few little eaves and do another coat on the yellow for the paint palette and then I'm done which is really great I didn't think I was going to be able to get the whole top of the building painted in the five days so it's big tick for me um yeah so i'm gonna go now finish it all off and then i can go and chill for the weekend all right bye So it's day 10, 9, 10, it's day 10 <laughs> uh, of painting and this is hopefully going to be my second last day. I had, I got rained out yesterday which was nice, it meant I had a week, uh, a day off. Um, this rain came out of nowhere but it's like sunny today super sunny and I haven't got much left to do the only part is I just have to uh, finish off the doorway which I've got a few little elements to refine like the detail on the paint little container that I'm doing and then there's a little part of the design that goes around the corner of the building which I have to still mark up um, and completely start I just wanted to finish the whole front facade before going on the side um, so that should be it's pretty straightforward the design uh, it's like a thimble and a bit of a cog which would be great so yeah so it's going good um, just thought I'd do a little check-in 
um, and let you know of the update because I don't think I've done one since I had the boom lift, which it went the other day as well. Luckily, it ran out of petrol just before I, or just as I finished, and I didn't realize that it was going to. So I could have actually, it literally conked out as I got it to the ground after finishing everything. So it could have been really bad. I could have like been stuck up in the air. Um, so I've learned my lesson of one, check the petrol before the start of the day, two, maybe have some diesel on hand just in case you run out. Um, yeah, so that lesson learnt. <laughs> um, so that went the other that went the other day. So now it's just obviously all ground level stuff, and the client's really happy with it at the moment. Um, and yeah, everyone's really stoked. So I'm gonna get painting, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hello, welcome back. I'm done, the project's over, yay! And I'm also wearing something different. <laughs> I realized when I was editing the videos uh, for uh, in the lead up for like the last month, I realized I'm wearing the same polar fleece jumper, which I love um, in everything. And so it looks like I don't wear anything else, but when I get home, I like to just put that jumper on because it's nice and cozy. And yeah, but today I'm wearing something different. I had my photo taken for the mural. So I wanted to wear this blue. Well, I just like wearing this um, blue. Um, it's like a windbreaker, small, like a thin kind of jacket. It's a really nice blue. So um, I decided I want to wear that. So yeah, sidetrack, but you know, it is what it is. Um, finished. So the project is over, photos are taken. The anti-graffiti treatment has been put onto the mural. I got an external paint company to roller it on. It's like a two-part solution varnish that gets um, rollered onto the wall. It's 
Anti-graffiti treatment is something that is really tricky to get right. It relies on things like the humidity being okay, the weather being all right, the wall can't be wet, the paint has to be set on the wall. Like there's a lot of different elements that go in and factors that go into having the right condition for the wall. And it's also really expensive per square meter. And if you don't apply it right, the wall can go really milky and there's like chemical reactions that happen. So it's something that I don't like to do at all. And it's something that I will always hire a third um, party to come in and do it afterwards because then it's not my responsibility. So when I'm starting a project, I'll always have that conversation with a client on where's that money coming from? Is it in my budget? Is it in your budget? That kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it just means I don't have to worry. So it got done and the wall looks really nice and shiny and just looks really slick. So really happy with that. So now it's time to um, tie up all the little loose ends and everything like that. So it's really nice. So if I'm going to reflect on the whole project, so I gave myself two weeks to do the painting of the mural, which I wasn't sure if that was gonna be enough time because with the boom lift and not ever using one before, I just didn't know if that would be enough and also weather permitting, but I got it done in two weeks. So pat on the back for me. <laughs> uh, and also uh, looking back on it, it didn't feel repetitive. Normally when I paint a mural or do like a large project, you know, it takes over my life. It's the only thing that I'm working on. And it means I get this like really repetitive process of, you know, get up early, go paint for 12 hours clean up, come home, wash the paint brushes, have dinner, go to bed. And just like you do that cycle, which means after sort of like seven or eight, nine days, you just want to get the project done. Like you're kind of over the repetitiveness of it. But for this project, it actually didn't feel like that at all. I think because every part of the mural was different. You know, I spent the first seven days working on a boom and then the next um, week working on ground level. So it felt like two different experiences. There was also with the door and the corner and working around a bend of a, of a building, like the two sides of a building, it meant the location always felt really different. One minute I was painting under a shelter, next minute I was on a footpath, then I was in a garden bed. So it never, it never felt the same for too long. I also think scale helped me get it done within the two week period. So my original design for the wall was actually at a smaller scale. There was more pieces, more objects on the, in the design and there was a lot more finer detail to do. Thank God we refined it again and I simplified it and scaled everything up because that just meant that I was able to cover more surface area. I was able to use rollers and get the paint on the wall quicker. And also it's something that you look at from the ground and it's like the bigger the the bigger the scale, the more impact it has. So that also worked in my favor. So for future, keeping reminding myself to work on larger scale is the best thing to do. And I think now that I know how to do this lazy man grid method of um, drawing things up on the wall, it gives me the confidence to work on a larger scale because I know that I can get that, I can get it done. I think before I was going, I only want to do things that are sort of arm width like arm span wide because then I can sort of really easily gauge is this big enough? Is it too small? So yeah, so I think teaming those two things up on reminding myself scale and also using the grid method will allow me to get to draw and paint bigger, which is great. Another thing is check the fuel levels of your boom and machinery. <laughs> uh, Ask those questions when you get it from the suppliers, you know, ask every question. Don't feel like you're being, you're asking like silly questions. It's definitely the income. Like I don't feel comfortable in like very like masculine spaces, especially with like tradie types. And I feel like I should just pretend that I know what I'm doing, but no, ask the questions. Having a roller arm 
like an extendable arm for your rollers is also a game changer. I've never used one before because I've always just been tall enough or I would just have a ladder. But when I was in the boom, knowing that I had this extra two meter long extension arm meant that I didn't have to go right to the very top and feel petrified. I could go a little bit lower and use that roller arm to get to the top and it just makes it easier. I could just cover more surface area with less movement, really. So get yourself a roller arm and practice with it. And then the final thing is like with filming for something like this, I wish I put more time into doing some time-lapse video recordings. As you'll probably notice from this, I don't have a lot or I don't have any really because the project kind of crept up on me and all of a sudden it was happening and I didn't have enough time to go and do recce's to work out where I could put cameras and where I could secure them in a way that I knew that no one would steal them. I also didn't really have the budget or the time to get someone else in to set that sort of up for me and make like maybe I need to get a GoPro uh, or maybe I need to just get a videographer to come along and do those kinds of things but it's just another whole layer of preparation that needs to be sorted out beforehand. I don't know I felt like the project was big enough as it was physically that it, that was enough to overwhelm me a bit so I just yeah, I couldn't do it this time around but I know for future if I want to be able to document these larger projects, I need to get some more time-lapse happening. So that's what I need to do for the future so I can show more. And I think that's it. I really enjoyed doing this whole project. I'm so happy that like the client today said how in love they, they were with it and that it's got such high impact, which is exactly what we wanted. I'm really proud of being able to get it done. <laughs> and... I can't wait to do like the next one now. So that's really good. I hope this video hasn't been too long winded. I hope you found it interesting um, and you've made it through the very end. So if you have, thank you so much. Feel free in the comments to drop any questions, say anything, just talk to me. <laughs> I'd love to know what you thought about this video. If there's particular parts that you found the most interesting or things you didn't really care about questions you would like to ask for like future projects that I would cover. Uh, also, if you liked it, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more projects up in the coming months. Also some other videos of me doing things in the studio. If there's anything you would like to see me do or make, then let me know. There's also in the description links to my Instagram, my LinkedIn, and also my website. So feel free to connect with me on those platforms as well. But otherwise, I'm gonna love you and leave you and go watch some Housewives. So, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Farewell.